There is news tonight from the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. The D.C. court has agreed to rule as soon as it can on Donald Trump's claim that as president, he is immune from criminal prosecution for the crimes he is accused of committing while in office. That two-page ruling signed by a George H.W. Bush-nominated judge and two Biden nominees grants a request from special counsel Jack Smith for an expedited hearing on Trump's immunity claim. Normally, that would be good news for a defendant. Hey, your appeal is going to be heard quickly. Not for Trump, whose lawyers were pushing for a longer, slower appeals process in hope it might postpone his January 6th trial until after the election. Earlier this week, Smith called Trump's bluff. He's also pursuing a parallel ruling on Trump's appeal, not just in the D.C. appeals court, which is normally where you go after this kind of thing, but all the way up at the Supreme Court. And now Trump has to submit his arguments to both courts next week. Kimmy Dial Gongo Williams, a former federal prosecutor who was senior investigative counsel to the January 6th committee. Donya Perry served as deputy New York State Attorney General and as well as assistant U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, and they join me now. All right, I don't want to get too in the procedural weeds here because this is a very weird case, but basically, Trump says that at the district level, I was president, I'm immune. Judge Shutkin says, I don't buy it. She issues a ruling I found very persuasive. So the next step up is D.C. Court of Appeals, right? Jack, so that's happening. Jack Smith is also going to the Supreme Court and saying, hey, this is going to get to you eventually. Can we just get along with it? So those are both sort of happening right now. But the D.C. Court of Appeals responding today and saying, like, yeah, we can move this along. Timmy Dio, what do you make of that? I think they are taking this extremely seriously. And I think it's important. You know, Judge Chutkin today stayed all the deadlines uh, in the trial, which means the discovery deadlines, the pretrial motions, all the work that has to happen to prepare for the March 4th trial that's all on pause because of this appeal. But what great news for Jack Smith today is that because the appeals court is, is expediting, Jack Smith is now on two tracks. He can win on the appeals court, but he's also prepping uh, the Supreme Court to get that potential victory there. It makes it more likely we have a trial next year. Yeah, so that, I mean, that was the one too today, right? Chuchkin says, look, I have to, st I, she said, she's not vacating them, right? She's not saying, the, these are gone. The trial's not happening. She's just saying it's all paused. We've got to see how this turns out. And now the ball's in the court of these appeals courts, Danya. And the big question here is, like, how fast are you going to move? It does seem like the D.C. appellate court is signaling, like, we can go here. Absolutely. As is the Supreme Court. They very quickly agreed to expedite this process to determine whether or not they will it. allow this leapfrogging to happen. So all of this is happening essentially next week, within the next week or so. So we'll see if they if they grant it, it will just skip over this process, go even more quickly. I have to say, there's a funny thing. I remember once it was it was in a Supreme Court argument, I believe, over uh, uh, trap law. Uh, it might have been women's whole health, where you know uh, b before o Roe v. Wade was overturned, right? Anti-abortion advocates would try to like create a bunch of like onerous regulations on abortion clinics. It'd be like the hallways have to be eight feet wide, and I remember this moment in Justice Kagan being like. Do we have to pretend that you guys actually care about this here? Like, we know what you're there to do. And I remember it's like so, I loved it so much, right? Because there's so, such a degree of law where like you're sort of presuming good faith. But this just seems like so obvious, the bad faith here. I mean, here's, the, here's Trump's lawyers complaining about their Christmas vacations, right? <laughs> Um, they, 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 this is their reply brief. They say this proposed schedule will require attorneys and support staff to work around the clock through the holidays, inevitably disrupting family and travel plans. It is as if the special counsel growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming, I must find some way to keep Christmas from coming, but how? And citation to Dr. Seuss. Like, what are we doing here, Kim Dyer? I mean, I, I got to say, it's, it's almost a bit offensive. I mean, it is. Because I think Jack Smith, in every filing he's put forward, has reminded the American people what is at stake. That we're dealing with a former president who directed violence, who used his political process to undermine the transfer's power. And when you have uh, former Tr President Trump's lawyers here citing children nursery rhymes, I think it really undermines the significance of what we're doing here. I'm also like, bro, I don't give a... Damn! Yeah. About your family vacation. I'm sorry. Like, a lot yeah. more at stake. There's yeah. stuff <laughs> happening here. It's really important. Like, it, it just seems like bizarre special pleading and whining. Yeah. But again, the goal here is to delay. Well, you and to to your point earlier. Typically, if a defendant gets a bad ruling, they would like to move this forward faster <laughs> yes, of course. rather than more slowly. And so here, it does kind of really, um, you know, betray the true colors here. Um, the, the, they say, uh, again, and this is the, 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 the Trump's lawyer brief, 
They say it's a blatant attempt to interfere the 2024 presidential election to disenfranchise the tens of millions of voters who support President Trump's candidacy. It does seem to me that that explicit argument is going to be made increasingly up this appeal chain. And I wonder if you think even justices coming from an ideological background more adjacent to Donald Trump or appointed by him are going to are going to cotton to that argument. Well, I think Jack Smith's response is, is a good one, which he's also focused on the American people. But what he's saying is that the American people have a right to this answer. To know. Exactly. <laughs> so I think it actually is empowering the American people the way Jack Smith has framed it, is that they should know whether the former president, in fact, engaged in this conduct. And frankly, if you were a defendant, what you want, That's typically, right, right you, you want to be absolved more His quickly. His name should be cleared before exactly. he appears, to, stands for... for you know, for the trial. Exactly. I mean, and, for the and, election. And if he truly is as innocent as he claims and he's going to, he would want to have his day in court. He would want to remove the shadow from his candidacy and go into November without it. So what are the things you're looking for, again, because it's all this weird timing game, right? I mean, the actual outcome matters, although I think that the argument for immunity is so thin that I, I don't, maybe you guys disagree with me, but I don't think anyone's... I think we're on the same page. Yeah, like, it's just, it's a ludicrous argument, honestly. Um, that, that what are you looking for next week as these, as sort of, these deadlines start to come in, like, what we're going to see happen? I mean, it's going to play, I mean, we'll see... There's a, a little bit of play, right? There's the uh, the Supreme Court is getting briefs on the 20th, 20th, yep, right, and then we have the 23rd for the for the Court of Appeals. So it's you know it's possible the Supreme Court could rule more quickly and then bypass the, right. the Court of Appeals. We know what the arguments are. Jack Smith said in his papers for the expedited appeal. We already know what the arguments, and maybe, you know, too bad, so sad if it bumps into your holiday plans, but this is largely briefed already. Yes. There's not going to be any new arguments. And so we, there, I don't think there's going to be any real surprises, and we'll see, you know, there's plenty of precedent. Although it is a unique context, right, can a former president be prosecuted criminally, there's a lot of precedent in, uh, in favor of, you know, affirming that ruling. Lisa Rubin, uh, my colleague uh, here at MSNBC who covers legal affairs for us, uh, made the point. She, was, she said, you know, they, the Supreme Court, to give one example, can move quickly when it wants to. And she talked about Bush v. Gore, right? I mean, Bush v. Gore was like all of a sudden right? yeah. they just like swooped in. They're like, stop, don't stop counting. We're going to like look at this at expedited review, which is to say like this is all volitional at some level. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> the Supreme Court is fully in control here. And I think they are... Them and their law clerks are going to be fully considering the wide range of possibilities here. They're going to be considering the political implications. I mean, they may not put that on paper, but I guarantee you they're thinking what happens next, whatever decision they make here. Okay. Um, I, mean, I want to ask you one more question, but I'm going to save it for next time. Okay. All right? It's a, it's a little bit of a procedural one, but it, it's uh, thinking about it. Timmy Dial, Gonga Williams, Tanya Perry, thank you both.